was writing my book, my editor said, you should put this cold therapy in and saunas. And I, I rolled my eyes. I wanted to write a really scientifically based book. But I looked into it anyway and actually found that there was decent scientific evidence that both of these approaches could work. Um, in saunas, because the saunas have been around since pre-Roman times, there's, a, a, there's more evidence that they're good for you. Uh, there are Finnish studies in, from Finland looking mostly at men um, for whatever reason. So the Finnish typically sauna bathe, as they call it, a few times a week, they have them at home. And it's very clear that the more times you go in the sauna per week, the less cardiovascular disease and heart attacks you have as a, as a man. I don't know about women, but pro probably the same. And so that I think that raising the core body temp, well, not core, but the surface and lung temperature of your body may induce hormesis. We know heat shock proteins that come on with heat can extend lifespan of animals. So that makes sense. And on the cold side, we don't know as much about that. It's, it's more recent, but uh, we do know that cold does induce what's called brown fat, which we have on our shoulders and back, only discovered 15 years ago to exist in adults. Babies have it because they don't shiver. They actually use their brown fat to stay warm. And brown fat is very healthy metabolically. Um, it burns energy. It's got lots of mitochondria. And it's thought that the brown fat secretes little molecules in the bloodstream that's helping the rest of the body. So there is some evidence that being cold and shocking your body that way is also inducing hormesis. Um, there's a sirtuin called sirtuin number three, sirt three, and that one is induced dramatically in levels by cold. Uh, and so again, just more evidence that putting your body in adverse conditions the way we used to live before we had air conditioning and heating uh, can really be beneficial.